So for that one, obviously everyone went for uh, Sonata. So there you go. And so everyone gets a point logically. So right now we're going to go with uh, Tony Storm going up against uh, Willow Nightingale, uh, single smash for the AEW Women's World Championship. Um, as you expect, of course, Ruby Soho and Soraya loitering in the background, trying to cheat and stuff. I like that Willow actually took them out so they would not like interfere so much. But uh, yeah, Tony got her. Tony got her. And it was just funny because she did something. I forgot, I forgot what it was. She did something, and Willow still like got up or something. And I was telling like because we sometimes do a little chat. We you know talk while we're watching the the shows. And I'm like, well, as long as Tony doesn't do Storm Zero, she'll be fine. Whoop! There you go, Storm Zero. And you know Willow's dead to the world, and Tony retains her championship. I mean, personally, I still feel it's too soon for Tony to uh you know. Um, what can I say to lose her title? But you know, uh, what do you guys think? I don't know. Like the match was okay. Um, again, it it did give us a chance. They it gave them a chance to showcase Willow a little bit more. Um, I don't like the way that uh Tony had won the match. Not to mention, and I brought this up with Jack. But is it just me, or now that she has the green hair, Ruby Soho is looking more and more like a female version of the Joker <laughs> than I've ever seen before in my whole life? Like, she maybe it's just me. I don't know. She but does. Yeah. Overall, it was still a good match. And I'm glad to hear about the good news about her getting the, uh, the, the other match in Japan, which big props for her, but honestly, I still think Willow should have won this one. It would have been nice for her to go, to go to Japan on a high note, but it is what it is. The match was just kind of meh. It was there. This was the only other match I was just kind of like, eh. I was hoping for more, but I was just kind of like, okay, well, I figured... You know, there's going to be some shenanigans, and I'm happy there is. That I was happy. I was. I was so close to getting the butt spot I wanted. <laughs> I'm so close. <laughs> but no. Um, but it was still. It it was still all right. It was an all right match. Um, Willow did really well. Tony did okay. It was just kind of there. Uh, you know, I didn't think Tony would win. I mean, I didn't think uh, Willow would win this soon because it's still too early for Tony to lose. Um, I keep thinking that eventually Tony is going to drop the belt to Soraya. That's my theory. Um, or someone else, either th Soraya or someone else. But um, yeah, I'm just kind of like, okay, it's, it's all right. It was just kind of there. It was an okay match. Unfortunately, like I said, matches that I had an actual interest in are the ones that the Beecher Report kept messing up on for me. This was another one of them. Oh. Anyway, from what I saw of the match, I did see how Willow took out Soraya and, and uh, Ruby, and I like I did enjoy that a lot. You know, I just really like Willow in general. I really wish she would have won, but I guess sort of like you guys were saying, it would have been too soon for her to win up to lose her title at this point, and they probably haven't her set up to um, drop the belt to someone else, but I just want them to do something with Willow. I'm sick of seeing her lose, you know? So, yeah, so that that's just my feelings on that. But no, but after finding out, you know, that she has the other thing that's going on, maybe that's why they didn't let, her lo let Tony lose to her, because she has that coming up, and she's concentrating on that. Maybe I mean, you know, she had that other match. She's accepting, yeah. right? Yeah, so she's I gonna. She's gonna be there. It's it's kind of like the same problem I I see a lot with um. And people keep calling. People could call me a New Japan Mark, but at least New Japan knows how to market. <laughs> um, <laughs> and uh, the thing of it is, is like, I mean, realistically, look at it this way. 
Look at all the top champions in AEW just on the women's division. You have Chris Statlander and you have Tony Storm. Every single time they've been defending their belts, the matches are announced either that week or the week prior. There's no build. There's no story. There's no nothing to get you pumped or excited. Um, nope. and, and there's no weight behind it. And it's like, if there's no weight or no threat to you as champion, then why are you a champion? Like, you know what I mean? Like, like, especially if it's not even, if it's not even the threat aspect, it's more of like, if the company doesn't Roddy Piper had a great line. I, I loved, he said, Roddy Piper had a great line. He said in a podcast, one of the last podcasts he did, he said, when someone's a great villain, in wrestling, the crowd hates the wrestler. But if someone is terribly written as a villain in wrestling, they don't hate the wrestler, they hate the guy that wrote him. And it's the mm -hmm. same aspect. It's the exact same aspect in wrestling where if the company doesn't give a shit about the champion or the championship for that matter, then why should we? So I'm like, they're, they're using... They're using Willow more in Ring of Honor as a promotional thing for a branch between Ring of Honor and New Japan and Shibata as the Ring of Honor pure champion and Sabre coming in defending his title in Ring of Honor. And it's 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 sad that it's like Tony put all of the respect for the wrestling industry into Ring of Honor and then AEW is just like, yeah, you exist too. Anyway, <laughs> like, but but the thing of it is, is respect begets respect, and I think in New Japan they're treating Willow way better than they did. Like the promo with Julia, like it, it built more up. Like Julia was like, "Who the hell is Willow Knight? Willow Knight and something, something Gale, whatever her name is." And then Momo Kogo, the girl she fought. And the term was like, don't you dare talk about her. She's strong. She's strong-willed. She's strong-hearted. You have no idea how big she is. And she's all like, I don't care. She's a foreigner. You think I care? <laughs> but I'm like, but it's kind of like, it's like, she's way stronger than you think. And you don't know how good she is. And I'm like, how in the fuck is stardom promoting Willow better than the company she signed for? How in the <laughs> fuck is that possible? <laughs> like, imagine, imagine if, Imagine if uh, LV Kingo, who signed to AAA, who's the AAA mega champion, got more talked about and popped in WWE, a company he has absolutely nothing to do than AAA. You'd be like, then why the fuck is he champion? <laughs> like, like, that's kind of my mentality with the women's division. And the sad thing of it is, is I agree. Mm -hmm. We're all seeing it. We're all seeing the cracks in the facade of like, Tony Storm's a great wrestler. It's like, yeah, when you let her. <laughs> yeah, you 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 are. I have to agree with that about the women's the women's matches. It's like, I don't even know what the story is supposed to be technically. It's with Willow or Tony or any of them. It's sort of like Tony's a champion. Throw any woman in there. Let her let that woman go up against her. But with, but at the same time, you put her up against certain people. I want to see the other one win. But this is more of a personality <laughs> thing. Say personality is like who do you like better is who do you want to win as opposed to what story can we get out of this? But I would have liked the whole idea with the theorizer, like Willow beat Tony, she, uh, Willow gets the belt, and then she ends up later on going up against someone like Athena again and have a title versus title match. I would have really actually liked to have seen that. But yeah, I, I should have known that was going to happen because this is Tony's promotion. He doesn't know what he's doing. The end. <sighs> like uh, going backwards, what really pissed me off really pissed me off with something that no one else noticed but me. Mm. And this was back on the pre-show. The pre-show had Hiromu Takahashi, who is the IWGP junior heavyweight champion. That is the third, that is the second biggest title in that company. 
and they didn't even mention he was the IWGP junior champion. And he's carrying the fucking thing to the ring. I'm like, dude, like the fuck? <laughs> Cause I'm like, a lot of you guys didn't even probably notice that a lot of you guys didn't even know who, what that, that, that was it. Like it, he was carrying the junior heavyweight championship around his shoulder and he's like carrying around, showing it to the camera, and they never mentioned that he was the junior champion. It's the same level of disrespect that they give to Japan. I don't get why. It's like you you simultaneously call them the best wrestling promotion, and you fully admit AEW would not exist without him. In fact, Ring of Honor wouldn't exist without them. And yet, when push comes to shove, you can't give that respect to them when they're at your show to help your show. It doesn't make any sense. I, I don't think the comment, they had the right commentators for this pay-per-view. Um, hey, uh, Johnny, what do you think? What did you think of the match? Uh, what I thought about the match, you said I think uh, Wardle should have won this match. Not a bang too much of Tony Storm, like with Ruby Soho there, like, they're, they're just so freaking annoying. And Soraya, like, they're so noisy. It's like, shut the, like, shut up. Like, you just keep hearing them. <sighs> like, like, shut up. Like, it gets annoying after a while. That, that, that's the only thing I remember about the match. I kind of wonder how the points went for this one, because I don't remember who picked what for this one. Yeah, let me get, get with you guys with this one. So, I stay faithful to uh, Tony. Jack stayed faithful to Tony. Everyone else went for Willow. In the vain hope that she thing. would win, because, because, you know, she should. Yeah, let me see here. There you go. Okay, uh, just quick story real quick. It's kind of funny, but this shirt, like, I just saw pe some person wear it once on Instagram or something, and I was like, damn, that's a badass-looking shirt. So I go for Pro Wrestling Tees looking for it, and I can't find it anywhere, either on your Kenny Omega Zone thing or the, just all of the wrestling in general. Because sometimes there are some products, you know, like um, the Jericho Cruise ones. You'll only see them on Jericho's page, not the overall AW page, but whatever. But anyways, I keep asking around. So someone told me that it was part of the of that particular uh, month's pro wrestling crate at a month that I wasn't subscribed to it. So I looked around online. I, I forgot it was either eBay or Amazon somewhere. I found it and I got it because I just I just this shirt's fucking epic, you know what I mean? Kenny Omega full on Akuma, you know? But the Omega thing glowing in the back instead of the ten symbol. But anyway, that takes us back nice. to thanks. Takes us to our I only wear it for like real rare occasions. But anyways, um right to our next match, which is Kenny Omega going up against Will Ospreay with Don Callis. And uh, for the IWGP uh, United States Heavyweight Championship, and what can I say? It was an intense match. Um, the most I remember is that they both really went at it with fucking everything. Like, like they really like it was over half an hour, I think, and they they just went at it with like everything they got. Um, the thing I remember the most is also that Don Callis was loitering in the beginning with his weird i guess bodyguards that was weird whatever and um you know he was told to leave but then near the end when they were both super spent and kenny was you know doing the v triggers and uh what's his name uh will Oscar was doing the heavy blade i think it's called a heavy blade and um which is kind hidden of ironic blade. because i mean that, that would probably be like moxley's move right the heavy it's blade. hidden blade it's the hidden blade. Ah, there you go. Hidden blade. Yeah, again, another Moxley move. But, um, you know, like near the end, Don Callis still shows up. And I think, yeah, he he gave Osprey the screwdriver to, to bash Kenny with and land his move and win the match that way. So Will Osprey um, is the new IWGP US Heavyweight Champion. 
because Kenny used to be it for you know for a moment, which is also something is I don't it's kind of like what Jack says. I don't remember Kenny carrying that belt around too often during you know, like I think it was till till like they say it was today. I was I was today years old and I learned he was a champion to begin with, you know. But um, yeah, so pretty good match. They both went all out. I remember Osprey also grabbed Kenny and just started bashing his face against the. Uh, announcement table i also remember there was a spot where near the steel steps they were bashing each other having blood there which i mostly remember because the blood was still there like in other the other matches and stuff like that so so there you go but overall one hell of a match pretty intense they're both amazing that one did kind of you know kind of wake me back up from, from some of these matches that were kind of so-so uh what are your thoughts amigos all right that match was a absolute banger. Like, those two beat the living hell out of each other. Um, which I find it weird that they didn't disqualify uh, Osprey due to the fact of, all right, uh, his manager was already ejected from the match. And yet, somehow Callus comes back out later and now it's not an issue. Like, even though he interrupted the match again, which should have been a disqualification, I don't understand how he was able to come back and then let that slide. But, eh, plot. But either way, it was one hell of a match. Like, Kenny sold his butt off when he was getting his head slammed into the announcing announcement table. Like, that looked a bit too real right there. Um... But it was a lot of good back and forth. Uh, Osprey pulled the one-winged angel on Kenny, and he got up on a one count and just went berserk, <laughs> which I thought was pretty awesome. Um, but in the end, Osprey pulled it off, which means they're probably going to pull a part three. And I wouldn't – and I'm still waiting at some point, somewhere in Kenny's career – and this would be a perfect time to do it if they did a part three. And just to complicate things, have Kota Obushi just show up again. Just out of the blue. Just, you know, Callus and Osprey are jumping him and Obushi comes back. Then you can introduce the Golden Lovers to AEW. I don't know how people would accept it, but I'd be all down for it. But overall, it was one hell of a match. I enjoyed it. Uh, I'll let everyone else go and I'll say my opinion. Actually, uh -oh. no, I'll go. Fuck it. I'll go now. <laughs> I'll, go now. I'll let I'll go now. Oh, that's cool. Unless you want to go, Jupy, do you want to go first? No, I don't mind. I like hearing what you gotta say, but unless you have to do your your epiphany, your epiphany um uh analysis. We I guess we, me and Johnny can let you go last. What do you want to do? Uh I'll let you guys go last. That's fine. Okay. All right. Here goes for Jack. Um. So this was obviously match of the night. Uh, they ended up wrestling for nearly forty minutes. So, um, and it felt like time didn't go by that long, which shows. I literally was saying this is this is what new japan is like this is new japan style wrestling where it's you're so invested in the match you don't even keep track of how long it is um that is like the pure level of like strong style japanese style wrestling um i got to see uh, there were so many spots where i was like oh my god this is crazy it's awesome um getting to see the like they won up their wrestle kingdom match because the Wrestle Kingdom match, which those that haven't seen it, I do recommend seeing. Sorry about that. The Wrestle Kingdom match, I do recommend those that haven't seen it to see it. Um, on top of that, it's also they just beat the shit out of each other. And they beat the shit out of each other in a realistic way for their styles. Because Kenny and Osprey both wrestle in a very, very intricate style of wrestling. It's very spot heavy but very precise in the way that they do their moves it's very like based around straightforward hitting straightforward movements 
it's all power moves um yeah and also like i said the fact is kenny won the iwgp united states championship at wrestle kingdom and that was in january and he's never once brought it to AEW. he's never once carried it to AEW. he's literally had it one other time and that was in new japan literally new year's dash so it was literally the week later and after that never seen until now which again goes back to that whole thing i was saying about the respect that's not shown to new japan that is shown to other promotions um and it's it's irritating as hell to me and i was happy i didn't give a shit how but i wanted osprey to take that belt away from kenny no matter what he did i didn't care how he did it it's the same thing i felt about john moxley losing the iwgp united states championship he did the exact same thing when he was the champion he was an AEW, never had it defended it once and never seen again and he had it for nearly two years i don't want to keep seeing that shit and i honestly just of the match uh a couple spots that i loved were seeing osprey do the one-winged angel osprey hitting his head to the steel k is still great of the steps which still had the blood on it in the main and next match which i was like awesome how he blueprinted that shit um because like even because like they were like uh quick stall for time so we could clean up the match because it was a bloody ass mess like it was so bloody and i loved it i loved the gore that was not moxley sneezing and bleeding like actually legitimately reasonably bleeding um and they literally put their all into these matches and i loved seeing every minute of it it was it was it just made my heart happy and being in the chat with you guys and seeing you guys excited watching it like it really made me so happy seeing you guys enjoying the stuff that i've been talking about for so long like two of the guys i've been talking about for years being the top guys and they're finally getting a, a, a national spotlight it was so cool to see and um yeah I, I was overall i was just insanely happy with the match i yeah i i it made up for it made up for any of the stupid other shit i didn't like about the pay-per-view that match made up for anything that i had a problem with all right. Oh, that was interesting there. Um, for me, this match was, as pointed out, very, very intense. And going back to the Marksley Kingston match and stuff, I don't think it, you guys, I don't know if either of y'all, you guys brought it up so that to step out for a moment. But um, anyone else noticed that Marksley did not believe the, for that match? Yeah. Yeah. Really? And we all, I think we all joked about it in chat, too, like... Yeah. I was like, hey, he didn't sneeze and bleed, you know? <laughs> or he didn't walk, just, you know, blink, and he just started uh, obviously blading in front of the camera. I mean, um, bleed, whatever. But anyway, yeah, for this match, um, like, as pointed out, it was really, really intense. I, got, I mean, it kept you, like, engaged the entire time, in my opinion. I mean... But the exception of the intro, because they, that did take quite a bit. But once the match got started, it was, you know, pretty decent pacing. But all the spots, I was like, ouch. But the main one that got me is when I believe was Osprey, I think, was um got Kenny and he like kind of slammed him like on the back of his neck or something. And I oh gosh, that move. I mean does anyone know if he got any if he, if Kenny suffered any injuries from the from the pay per view? Not that I'm aware of. None of the reports say that. But um, then again, if he was knowing Kenny, he probably would. Knowing Kenny, how I know him, he would have been like his arm would have been like broken in half. It's like I can still go, Coach. Put me in there. Just a push. No, no, no. So no, coach, your arm is hanging off the bone and what's your problem i still have another one what are you upset about oh my god that just reminded me that simpsons episode with barf uh with lisa with the babysitter arm and bart broke his arm like on purpose and he was like swinging it around i'm <laughs> just thinking of kenny doing that but oh, oh that's just so gross but anyway yeah that one little move got me and i was like oh my gosh kenny 
I was like, does he not have a concussion? How is his neck? <laughs> I was just thinking about things like that. And I'm just saying, after what happened to me on Tuesday, and I got partially messed up, how is he not, <laughs> you know? <laughs> well, yeah, even I was wondering that, because, all right, so to take the bump for a one-winged angel, that's not easy, and it's not something you can get up from, like, as quickly as you know possible even if you do it safely that's gonna hurt a little bit and when osprey put him in his own move and then only got a one count and he just jumped right up i'm just like yeah something something's not right with that boy <laughs> that boy ain't right i tell you what you right that boy ain't right that's all i got to say but yeah, that just really threw me. And that was the main spot that stood out to me. So that was called the one winged, that's his one winged winged angel move. Uh yep. yeah. That's Kenny's ultimate finisher. It's the one winged angel. So he did the one winged angel. Cause you know, I I have a hard time remembering yeah. move names. Uh, yeah, everybody. Osprey did Osprey did Kenny's ultimate finisher on Kenny. That's it. Oh, also yeah, I mean I, Kenny took it as an insult. <laughs> Yeah, Kenny can, can didn't take too kindly to that. Oh, I can see, I can understand why. But yeah, I thought it was a pretty good match. It was intense. It kept your got you know a little adrenaline rush out of me, and I was like going out of my mind, especially when I saw that move. And I was like, oh my god, why are you moving? <laughs> All right, what do you, how about you, Johnny? Um, yeah, this match, um. It's the first time I actually see Will Osprey, and he's a very, very good, phenomenal wrestler. And it was a very intense, bloody match, a legit bloody match, not the John Moxley blood match, you know. And yeah, they were both giving their all. And, and to be honest, there were many times that I think Kenny could have won the match, but for whatever reason, you know, he couldn't win the match. And, you know, this match was super long, and it's like, there were times where you're wondering, damn, when is this match going to end? Not because I wanted to end, but just because, like, damn, this is, this is actually going for a long time. You know, that's how impactful this match was. So I was actually um, glad that Will Osprey won the match, just basing on the just the way he, uh, he fights and the technique that he has uh, during this match. So, yeah, I, I was so happy with the, with the outcome, you know. And uh, hopefully Kenny didn't got too injured. <laughs> That's all I'm gonna say. Yeah, we all went for Osprey, so one point for everyone. Let me just kind of add those in there real quick. This is gonna be close, but like I said, a lot of it was more divided during those uh, zero hour matches because they were more of a random, you know, coin flip kind of thing. So uh, let's see. Next match we got here was um, Sting, Darby Allen, and Tetsuya Naito going up against. Oh boy. The Suzuki gods, uh, Jericho, Guevara, and Minoru Suzuki. And um, what can I say? Lots of highlights here and there. Uh, I remember, well, Suzuki in general, he's a, he's always a tough customer to deal with and everything. Uh, Naito was there, so, of course, he was the big guy. He got the big, you know, uh, elevation and everything. And, and, again, both Jack and Panda were right when they were, when they were like, predicting who was this to be announced guy, you know what I mean? And yeah, to what you guys, to what Jack said, Naito did take his super sweet time taking off his outfit before fighting and stuff. He did troll the guys a bit. Um, of course, he did get a little bit of Sting versus Jericho. Uh, Jericho trying to get him get him in the, uh, what do you call it? Uh, the, what you, the things of Jer the rings of Jericho. Is it rings of Jericho? It's been a while. Walls of Jericho. There you go. Walls of Jericho. I'm just so used to the Lion Tamer, you know? And, uh, you know, Sting doing the, the splash on him and stuff. Um, I think Suzuki actually... Didn't Suzuki and Sting kind of mix up a little bit? Um, I think Darby... Wasn't Darby, like, out for most of the match? That like, he just fucking died? Yeah. Right? I think... I want to say Suzuki did, like, a power driver or some shit on my side of the match. And since then, like, Darby was just dead for the whole thing. And everything, but um, the match was very short. 
It was another one of those matches. Once you get an extra like drink or something, and bam, over quick, you know. So unfortunately, we didn't get to see as much of, of Naito as we would have wanted to see. But uh, yeah, Sting, Darby, and, and Naito uh, won the match. Hey, is it okay if I go first? Yeah, this go time. For it. All right. Um. Okay. For this match, as pointed out, it was a little too short for my liking. And like you said, and I, I thought it was weird that Darby Allen was out. So I was thinking maybe he hurt himself and they were like checking in on him or something before he can get back to actually do something. So I thought that was kind of weird. And I think the finish was of the match was really all for me personally. Because, eh, but anyway, I think my, uh, the main weakness of this match for me was the fact that Naito was chosen to be in there, but he did not get to showcase his abilities in the way that he should have been allowed to do to do so. And I think that was a major misstep for this match. So it just felt like they had to cut it short because the Danielson match was coming up, or they had to cut it short because they had to extend probably one of the other matches because of the Adam Cole match being kind of canceled out or something. It just felt off. Like it, it just felt like it shouldn't have ended when it ended in the, in, with that type of a finish. And hope, and, but I will say this: watching the match because I didn't get to see much of Naito. I was, I actually, made, it actually made me want to look up stuff on him. So I will give the Forbidden Door that, you know, it made me interested in his, in his skill and all that. Because he looked like he could be, a, a, you know, a pretty fun wrestler to see. And I will thank Jack for the videos that he shared. <laughs> but the match, like I said, it, it, it could have been way better than what it was. It just felt like a blink and you miss it type thing. And that's just how I feel at the moment, feel, felt about that match. All right. I have to run again. <laughs> Be right back. All right. Yeah. I do kind of feel the, uh, that match did kind of miss its mark as far as the time went and the uh, and the useful of having Naito. Like, for as short as it was, they could have just made Naito a special guest referee. Like, there was almost no point in him even being there except for the fact of, him showing up just to piss off Jericho. Um, and honestly, you know, when Sting went up against Jericho and Jericho put him in the walls of Jericho, I never thought I'd be seeing Jericho that many times in a row, but whatever. I'm surprised he didn't go old school and try to go with the Lion Tamer since that was one of the matches everybody wanted back in WCW, but it never happened. So I'm a little surprised at that there. Now, the shortness of the match, that could have been a, a hey, whole I'm back. Sorry. ball of things. I mean, that could have been due to the fact of, you know, the Kenny and Osprey match went long. You know, it could have been, yeah, because of the absence of Adam Cole in that match, which should have made it a little bit longer, to be honest with you. Or it could have been the fact of, yeah, maybe Darby Allen did get knocked the fuck out. I mean, it's Darby. Uh, he's a good wrestler, but he can be accident prone at times. So that could have been the case. But I mean, it was a fa it was a decent match, but it was just too damn short for me. It's way too damn short. Yeah, I agree. I think uh, I think the match was a bit short, but I also feel that what the match was essentially supposed to be is kind of like a a um a breather for the crowd because. <laughs> Let's be honest, a lot of us were like, whoo, like overwhelmed by that last match. Um, oh, yeah. But, uh, yeah, I, I do think it was a little short. And the sad thing of it is, is I really was hoping to get you guys to see the Destino because I love the Destino. Um, it's basically a, a sliced bread. That's the name of the move. But it's really, it's cool seeing Naito do, pull it out. Um but yeah, I mean, it was cool getting to see Naito in an AEW ring. That was really cool. Uh, Sting and Jericho in the ring, also cool. Um, yeah, it was an all right match. Uh, like I said, it was just doing what it was supposed to do, which is give everyone room to breathe, essentially. That's pretty much it, yeah. All right. 
So what I thought about this match, pretty much like what everybody else said, the match was kind of short. I just like the match because Sting was in it. And, hey, it's, it's good to see him back. It's Sting! Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, and then for him to almost knock himself unconscious later on in the week. <clears throat> But yeah, I think that the match could have been cut short for that same reason, though, that they want, they probably wanted to still make Sting look good because, you know, obviously Sting is not as young as some of the other wrestlers, you know, so maybe that's why they kind of cut it short for that reason as well. And also because Darby Adam got super injured and it's like, holy shit, is he still with us? So, you know, that's why they probably cut it short as well. What, was he injured or whatever? Uh, that was weird. Or I guess it was just booked that way to give Naito more time, maybe. No, oh, because the thing is that Darby Adam always gets injured like that, though. He that dude injured. is not going to make it to 40. I'm going to call it now. Well, I mean, he will. He'll just be in horrible shape. That's what I mean. I meant, like, he won't be, like, fully functioning by 40. <laughs> That's what I mean. <laughs> He's going to be like, I used to be somebody great. Oh, God. Okay, so everybody went for Team Sting, so everyone got a point. So now we go to the big one. Now we go to the main event. We go with uh, Brian Danielson, American Dragon, going up again. Kazushka Okada for a singles match just to prove, like, who's the best, you know? And um, what can I say? This is another match similar to the Kenny one, even though the Kenny one was just a tad longer, where they just... They just get their all, balls to the wall, a lot of good wrestling, a lot of good like techniques and submission moves and stuff like that. They're really trying like their best to overcome each other. But um the part that got me actually was like the very end. I don't remember any like specific spots besides the typical ones, you know, Brian doing the 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 flying knee thing and his kicks and stuff and whatever. But um in the end, he got Okada in this, like, I don't even know what you even call it, this super complicated-looking submission move, and he was far from the ropes. Then the, the free hand he, he had, he grabbed that hand and twisted it back, too. Like, like his whole, like, every limb, every limb was twisted and, and bent in ways that it shouldn't be that, you know, poor Okada, he had no choice but to tap. It was such a painful and really, you know, intricate looking submission move. And again, nowhere near the ropes and not even the foot could reach. It, it, no, nothing to do with tap. And and I was like satisfied because that was like one hell of a match. They really gave it their all. It was it was amazing. But I still remember that because that was, I don't know if that movie even had a name or whatever. I don't know if the commentary called it out or whatever, but holy fucking shit, that finisher, man. All I got one thing to say about this match is that it had the final countdown. Yes. Oh yeah, that was yeah, that was uh Brian's intro. Oh, it's so nice hearing that. Yeah, there's a match too, but I'm, I'm sorry, we just got to go back to that because that that is the epitome of music entertainment. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, but uh, seriously. I, I don't I don't know what I was expecting from the um from the match honestly, but it was a pretty good match. Um, you know, Danielson and and Okada they 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 you know it raised my my expectations were risen from this. You know, I mean, I didn't I didn't know what to expect going in honestly, but I liked what I saw. I liked the technical side of things because both because both I know are technical wrestlers, especially Danielson. But there was the one spot where wasn't they did what's his what was it, Okada did that flying that elbow drop on Danielson and yeah. he like kind of landed on his arm and Danielson sold that so well and I was wondering is it is it true that he actually got injured for real? Yeah. So what happened was, um, yeah, he so Okada, it wasn't actually on Okada. Danielson even said it was on him. What Danielson did was, so when you do an elbow drop, you have to keep your arms straight down. Uh, Danielson, for some reason, moved his right arm closer to his chest. For some reason, I think it was like a weird instinct because he doesn't deal with top rope moves too often. And he accidentally moved it. And what happened is Okada landed full body on his forearm. So his entire, he thought, oh, I just might have 
sprained it. And then Brie Bella posted the photo of the x-ray and it is completely uh one of his arms uh one of his arms is completely broken in half one of the uh one of the um i think Jeez. i can't remember yeah it's completely snapped in half um wow and, and, he so, and he so, still finished the match yeah he 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 wrestled at that point he wrestled 10 more minutes after that so um yeah so he was, I mean, the convulsing was because the reason he was doing the convulsing was actually not because he was in that much pain, but because he was like trying to sell it. He's like, have the docs look and see if it's that bad. And Okada was like, okay, well, let's see what's going on. And then, like I said, and he still kept going. So yeah, he actually legitimately that. broke his arm. Um, Yeah, I posted a picture. I posted a video on, uh, yeah, she posted, uh, Brie Bella posted on her Instagram, the actual x-ray. And it is gnarly. Uh, so, yeah, they thought he was going to be out for 16 weeks. Nope. A lot longer than that. <laughs> so, oh, no. So, uh, so goodbye to the Blackpool Country Club because uh, none of them have the charisma of Danielson to keep that shit going. <laughs> I was going to say, with the um, finish of the match, you know, with, with the card tapping out, I guess in a way it kind of made sense that Okada, Okada would lose. But I still was thinking that Danielson should because I always, you know, like the, the rumor was that he had been dealing with injuries early on, and which is why he just been commentating. And I kind of figure, well, if he loses, then that way he'll be he'll be in tip top shape for um all in, you know, the summer, uh, you know, later on, you know, for a couple of months from now, whatever. And now he's definitely all out for that. I'm mean, seriously. <laughs> With this situation, so that kind of threw me. So I was expecting Okada to win, but I guess I don't know. Or he could, you know, maybe Danielson could have gotten a rematch with Okada later on or something. But yeah, I was not expecting Okada to tap out, even though I know Danielson is famous for making his opponents tap out because that's his style. So, like I said, it was. In, it was an okay match. I didn't mind it. And with the final countdown, I still say that the only reason they let Danielson win is why they have an excuse to use the song. Because that's going to be the only time you hear that I heard it was so, it was, it's, it's to the use, the rights that Tony had to use to get the rights to that song is equivalent to a wrestling contract for like, like one of his top stars. So his top talent or whatever. So yeah, that's that, apparently that, that was going to be, a, that's a one-off yeah. thing. <laughs> yeah. They're asking for insane amounts of money for that shit. Mm. So that's my feelings on it. And Jack is back. So Jack can probably give his opinions on the last couple of match on, uh, the, um, who was the previous match and this one? Oh, I thought I already gave my, account for that one but uh it did what was the last the last match was the Kenny naito was... one yeah the night yeah the night one. one you did yeah, I, I i did right before i got <laughs> i got disconnected again but oh, uh okay. no it's cool um so this was a match not built on any sort of like heel thing or anything this was literally the dream match of who are the two greatest wrestlers on the planet? Because the fact of the matter is every wrestler in the indie circuit copies from either Danielson or Okada. And the thing of it is, is I mean, and now it's more Osprey and Kenny too, but you could throw them in there too. But the fact of the matter is for over 20 years, for like over a decade, both of them have had this <sighs> crossing paths of similar similar things but danielson has busted his ass through and then okada busted his ass too to become the top of the mountain whereas danielson was never at he was always close but never he was always a bridesmaid never a bride as far as like credentials but as far as talent no one could ever beat him but the thing is the whole match was great but in even in the press conference the post-match press conference that Danielson said, he even said, 
after the match with Osprey and Kenny, so because he said both me and Sting, he said me and Sting were sitting standing backstage next to each other, and we were watching. It was he said it was me and Sting. We were watching the Kenny Osprey match, and then after the match, I said, I don't want to follow that shit. That was too good. And Sting <laughs> said, and Sting said, how the hell do you think I feel? <laughs> so just the visual of Sting and Danielson saying that is hilarious to me. But anyway, but the match itself, I I loved it. I I that's the first time and I've only seen it once. I don't know if any of you guys ever else picked up on this. The amount of pure shock in that arena to seeing Okada tap out. Like he has never tapped out in his his career ever and he made okada tap out like that is insane like i haven't heard a shock in that arena in an arena like that in a wrestling arena since the streak ending like that's the level of shock in that arena was just dead silence you know what, um, Jack? I hate. To, I, I want to uh, admit something here. When mm-hmm. I saw, I, 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 can't, I don't know, um, if Mark, if you recall it, mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure my reaction was similar to that. Yeah, so even, you were surprised. Me yeah. and my roommate and my friend at the. Me and my roommate literally were speechless. Like, legitimately, like someone had just like like bitch slap me i was literally out like oh my god okada yeah, tapped yeah. okada but losing <laughs> understandable but not by tapping okada's never tapped what the See, fuck? i didn't know that i did not know that but like yeah. i said even i was shocked by the finish and i couldn't figure out why i was shocked by the finish yeah. maybe you mentioned it before that okada you know you talked about okada before and maybe subconsciously i was remembering i'm happy you first. guys got to see the rainmaker i'm happy you got to see the rainmaker though <laughs> no. but it was it was like I was so in shock. I, I think I, I think every like I said that entire arena pin dropped. I could not hear a single fucking person. I was like, <gasps> like oh my oh my god, like ah uh, that's seismic. I was like fuck. And then for him to literally, I mean that that is going to be one of those matches that's going to be talked about for years because of just the sheer willpower between those two. Like you had a guy who literally broke his arm and made the untappable tap. And it is hilarious to me because I I, I literally said that to you guys in the chat, but I mean this sincerely. Any of y'all motherfuckers that say MJF is an amazing wrestling wrestler compared to any of the last four, the between Osprey, Omega, uh, Okada, or Danielson, they're wrong. They're so wrong. <laughs> and I, I don't mean you guys. I mean like the crowd. I mean like the marks. It's like, well, they're not as good as J- M- M- MJF or Moxley. Fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> Moxley Moxley is like the Burger King of wrestling, and Okada is like a well-seasoned, perfectly cooked steak. <laughs> and Danielson's like one of those really, really, really good like sandwiches you'd get at a taco truck. You know, I, I mean, like those places you can't find anywhere. It's, it's like, oh, I was freezing in Chicago, and this, this, this truck pulled up, and it gave me the best sandwich I ever had in my life. And you're like, what was the name of the place? I don't remember, but it was an amazing sandwich. <laughs> like that's that's Danielson. <laughs> I just can't like I don't know like how he got that guy, how he got Okada, and like I said, that very overly complicated looking submission move with a fucking broken arm. He was trying to snap like that's the thing, is he that move. If I'm not mistaken, that move was the move that almost Okada's only almost tapped out one time 
in his career. And that was against Shibata. And that move that he did, which was called the double cross, I think that's what it's called, or something like that. It's called no, it's like it's like Japanese for it's it's Japanese for like looking both ways. I can't remember what the fuck it is. It's like something like like in the equivalent of like turning directions or looking both ways or something like that. But he literally did that kind of move, but it would like be like a chokehold into an arm bar and the legs would be between the arm. Like Shibata almost made Okada tap in that match that ended his career. That was the only match that Okada ever almost tapped out, but he didn't. Um, <laughs> but he, it's, I think it was that same move. So it is kind of like cathartic that Okada, if Okada was to ever tap, it would be to a move that Shibata made. So it is kind of crazy how that ended up working. I believe it is that same move, if I'm not mistaken. But I'm just like, yeah, I, I, I was, like I said, I was speechless. I think I saw, I think we were all speechless <laughs> when, we, when it happened. We're like, what? <laughs> it was kind of like that moment where, uh, where, uh, Kurt Angle made, uh, I remember like Shawn Michaels for years was bragging. I've never tapped out. I've never tapped out. And then Shawn Michaels taps to get Kurt Angle and everyone's like, what? <laughs> I I don't know if anyone else remembers that. It was years ago. But I was like, oh my God, he made that he made that untappable tap. Ah, like, but this is different because it's Okada. Like, fuck, his name is synonymous with wrestling. I mean, again, it, granted, if anyone was gonna beat Okada, I'm happy it was Danielson. If anyone was ever gonna make Okada tap, I'm glad it was Danielson and not, hey, let's give it to Daniel Garcia or some whatever or some other fucking yeah, bullshit. He- or Cass- yeah, this could be you know, it's all about Cassidy. Yeah. And you're going to see when it was started dancing on Okada. <laughs> also, what what's so funny is, here's another thing on the side note. What's really funny is Okada, is Jericho created the gimmick of the pain maker as a play on the Rainmaker. Okada never wrestled. <laughs> never wrestled him. Too scared to fight him. I'm like, that's fucking funny. <laughs> the rock and roll star that fight with uh airline airline um attendants and uh, um and, and hotel workers don't want to take on a cotta? Wait, yeah. you did is what that now? what you're saying? No you did, saying he did what? So, now? <laughs> Now, so, uh, so, uh, uh, someone who who fights with um, uh, those who work in the airline industry and hotel workers doesn't want to go up against Okada. No, I'm saying, like, when did he do that? I was like, oh, is that, is that a real thing? Did he do that or? Oh yeah, it's a real thing. He always complains. Of, he he seems to always get complaints or kind of whines about airline related, you know. Or stuff either dealing with the airport, airport stuff. Oh, or gotcha, gotcha. Hotel, I thought there was like some leaked footage worker. of him like decking an air. Oh For some no! Reason, no. I, just had, like, I thought there was like some footage of him like I thought there was like some footage of him like decking an airline worker. I'm like, what happened? But, <laughs> but apparently there was some body cam footage from a police officer overseas or something. I forget where it was. Uh, I don't know. I'm not getting into that, but apparently there has been video, but of course the person can't put it out because they would risk losing their job even if they admitted that they met Jericho and they showed it to a friend. That type of thing. And they didn't realize it was Jericho until after the fact. (laughs) Because the cops were called on him and stuff because causing noise in the hotel and all that stuff. And he was drunk. Sounds about right. Yep. That's uh, right. yeah. And he was all like, and they, apparently he was all like, yo, don't you know who I am? You know, like that. <laughs> <laughs> or Christopher Jericho. I'm the rocks. I, I, play was on, I was on Dancing with the Stars, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my. Uh, thoughts, Johnny? <clears throat> okay, so for this match, uh, from what I remember, this had seemed to be a very long match, I think, and very intense, and 
they're both like very technical wrestlers. And I think that just like what everybody else, you know, was surprised at the end result when, um, yeah, when Brian Danielson um, defeated Okada by submission. Like, I don't know, that was like a big shocker. I think people are not really expecting that outcome, to be honest. So that's all pretty much what I remembered about the match. And of course, you know, uh, Brian Danielson, um, you know, the, 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 you know, final countdown music when they're playing that song, when he's entering the ring, that, that's pretty awesome. I think that kind of gets the crowd pumping. The final countdown. Do, 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 do. Yes! 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 <laughs> anymore for to avoid copyrights yeah well, that was that was epic i still remember a little prank i played uh one of my one of my uh jobs was uh they were shutting down and stuff so i pl- and i just happened to get like portable speakers around that general time it was like either a gift or it came in one of my blind boxes i don't know but i went into the the break room and got my phone hooked up and crank the mini speaker as loud as I could. And you know, it's the final countdown. Da, 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 until you know, until they told me to like turn it down or whatever. I, I knew they were, but I was gonna enjoy it anyway. Because again, it's the last day. They're, they're not gonna fire anyone now. You know what I mean? Like who cares? <laughs> like us showing up was basically a technicality, you know? But um did everyone already go? I, I don't know. I don't remember. And it, it, it keeps happening, but I don't remember if uh, Panda already went or not. Or Panda's even here. No, I didn't go. Oh, there you go. Okay, so this time I'm 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 correct. Okay. Okay, I'll put it to you like this. I started watching the match scene now. At the end, I was standing up looking at my computer because I can't believe Daniel Bryan made Okada tap. Like what the hell? And now that now that I know the extent of the damage that was actually done, and he went through ten more minutes with a broken freaking arm. Like I, Daniel Bryan, I thought was eh, okay, but now I gotta give him way more props because when you go up against. Oh, somebody like Okada, who wrestling wise, training wise, everything has legitimately gone through hell and back, mm-hmm. and then defeat, and then on a level of toughness that you know nobody can believe. This guy almost ended Shibata's career with a headbutt, mm-hmm. and then you turn around and then. You make this guy tap, and on top of that, you're doing this with a broken arm. I gotta give much props in the world to Daniel Bryan, um, Bryan Danielson, on this one. But overall, it was a it was a fairly decent match. Um, again, I was highly surprised. My jaw was on the floor when he tapped, but like he said, they. <laughs> They were saying that they were they were out uh, by the end going, well, I didn't want to top the Omega and Osprey match, but they damn near came close on that one. They really did. That was a good match. Also, what's really funny is, um, like I said, like one of the things I was mentioning before is the parallels between Danielson and Shabbat and uh, Danielson's and Okada's careers are very similar in the funniest way because, like. Not in a funny way, but in a weird way, because like now that they've cr- their paths have crossed, it's kind of like weirdly symmetrical to what happened with Danielson and um, Nigel McGuinness. Because in the same thing that I told you guys about the concept of forever rivals, Danielson's forever rival has always been Nigel McGuinness, and that's why if you ever listen on ca- commentary, he calls Danielson clam digger danielson because he used to call him that because he's always clam digger refers to like oh you're digging for clams because you're dirty you're like you're beneath me you're like you're a commoner because nigel was always like the regal guy and he's always like that clam digger danielson 
but literally the match between him and Okada reminded me so much of um, what people considered the greatest indie match of all time. And it was uh, Danielson versus Nigel McGuinness for the Ring of Honor World and Pure titles. They unified them. And it was it was a 60-minute pure match that I don't want to spoil it, but it was a bloodbath. It was a mo- it was a war, like utter war. And in that match, during that match, I believe Nigel got his shoulder dislocated, and Danielson had a concussion, and I think he also broke his orbital bone in that match. Um, Isn't that like around the eye or something? Yeah, that's literally the the part of the skull that surrounds your eyeball. Yay! I know anatomy. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So he, yeah. I'm like, but like I said, but that they went, they had a 60 minute pure match, and then it went to a time limit draw, and then they said, "Keep that fucking clock going," and then they literally, like, kept it going for like another seven minutes, and it was like, oh my god, it was a war. But anyway. Um, but like I said, it was just like, it's, it, it reminded me of this match in the sense of like, obviously not to that extent, but it it reminded me of like, it makes me feel good that you guys enjoyed it. It, I'm so happy that you guys enjoyed it because I was like, this is pure wrestling for me. Like, this is what wrestling is to me like, like this and, and yes, Osprey and, and Kenny was great too, but their wrestling style is more spot wrestling. And then Danielson and Okada style wrestling is just pure wrestling. Like it's just wrestling. And like that kind of wrestling is like my favorite kind of wrestling because it's kind of like a rare art to see anyone could pull it off proper. Um, but then you see like hundreds of guys doing like flips and shit. <laughs> you know, there's like 700 Jeff Hardy wannabes, but there's like very few Kurt Angles. You know what I'm saying? Like it's like that kind of thing. Yeah, <laughs> like that's that's kind of my mentality about it. But like I said, I'm happy you guys enjoyed it, and it it just really made me happy. Hey, I love the I like the little Chun Li figurine. Yeah, I'm trying to put her in some position where you can kind of see her on there while it. Why is she wearing red? Uh it's based on her. You remember that that era they did in Street Fighter, the original Street Fighter Two, where her versus screen was red instead of like blue, and then they fix it later in Champion Edition. Oh yeah, that's kind right. of a reference to that. It, it was like the. You know, lots of Funko Pops got variants, so that was like the variants. I'm like, oh, I just got to pick up this one. You know? Oh, that's pretty cool. It was kind of pinkish. It was a little yeah. pinkish. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, I just wanted to say that real quick. Yeah. Yeah, it was kind of an orangey, pinkish sort of, but then it became like full-on pink in Champion Edition where you could pick, you know, their other characters. So, um, so overall, guys, what do you think of the pay-per-view in general? Uh, for me, you know, I always have fun because it's, it's the time to kick off and enjoy your snacks and hang out with uh, with Jupes and everything and watch it. But um, I mean, those two were the matches of the night. Those two, and I did like seeing the Sting Jericho thing. It was just a shame that you know with the Nitro stuff, we didn't get to see enough of him. The other matches, Raw kind of. I mean, I wouldn't say anyone was particularly bad. It's just those two. Were, were the real, like, memorable ones. The the one that was uh, Okada versus uh, Daniel Bryan, or whatever, American Dragon, and uh, Osprey versus Omega. You know what I mean? So those were, like, the epic pay-per-views of the, of the evening, the matches of the evening. Everything else was still good. There wasn't really anything that was good. I mean, I guess if there was a match that was bad, and it was really bad, it's just, you know, why did you pair off Okada? I mean... Sonata versus, uh, you know, Jungle Boy, I guess. I guess part of the story was that, that let's make him a sore I still think Let's make him turn still think, after this. I still but. think the worst match was, uh, I personally still think the worst match was a was the AEW title, because at least at the very bare minimum, Sonata and, and Jungle Boy wrestled. <laughs> like, at least they did wrestle. So overall, we'll talk to um, whoever's next. Well, I don't know. Overall, I think this pay-per-view was really damn good, especially, uh, like, it kind of ramped itself up to the Omega and Osprey match, and then the Danielson and Okada match was pretty phenomenal. Like, 
I can't really say that there was a bad match in there except for the the Orange Cassidy match, but you know, you could take it or leave it. But otherwise, was not a bad pay per view. Was definitely miles and miles better than the last one because that was just a snooze fest. Um, like I said, that actually uh, downgraded us to the number two cure for in- insomnia. Because the number one was watching that pay per view because I was out quicker than a bit than having than being on a Benadryl bender. That was a uh, double or nothing, wasn't it? Yeah, it was yeah. double. See, you don't even remember the pay per view. <laughs> That's how bad it yeah. was. <laughs> it was so bad you don't even remember which pay per view it was. Like, but it was double or nuts or slam Survivor Mania. <laughs> double or what's his nuts? You know. So, I mean. But overall, this was a way better pay-per-view, much more consistent, much better wrestling, actual wrestling. Um, So, yeah, this is definitely one that I would watch again. Oddly enough, amongst, uh, I I would put this in in, in my uh, wrestling pile with the Wrestle Kingdoms, uh, the past few Wrestle Kingdoms I've watched. So, yeah, this would actually go in that row gallery with that. Oh, I thought Wendy was going to go first. But anyways, um, I, I, I enjoy this pay-per-view. It's way, way better than Double or Nothing. Double or Nothing was a big disappointment. Uh, but this pay-per-view, they actually, you know, did it right. And they had good wrestlers, good wrestling. Um, I think the bookings were a lot better, too. I mean, some of the matches are kind of weird. I mean, you know, I don't know, the Orange Cassidy one's kind of weird. Uh, but other than that, most of the bookings were pretty good. You know, it's, it's up to you if you like certain wrestlers, if you like certain outcomes from the matches. But overall, this is the pay-per-view to watch. And, yeah, it's definitely worth watching it again. I mean, if you, yeah, if you, if you don't have nothing to do the next day, like you don't have to go to work or anything like that, Definitely watch the pay per view because it's a, it's going to be a long pay per view, but it's worth it. I thought Jack was going to go, which is why I didn't say anything. Um, for this pay per view, I actually liked it. I actually stayed away for all of it, unlike the other one. What was it? Double or nothing, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um. Didn't I fall asleep on that one? Uh yeah, you were pretty zoned out by the main event. Yes. <laughs> Thanks for that. I um, think for that reminder, this one had more, it had more, it had more stuff to it that was worth watching, in my opinion, and it kept me more interested. I guess mainly because of the um, New Japan wrestlers, and you know, just cured made me a little curious about some of them, especially Naito. I don't know why, but I'm just really drawn to Naito for some reason. And I guess, like I said, I didn't get to see his stuff in the ring. So this pay per view made me want to, you know. Look more into some New Japan, you know? I'm so So happy you could say that, Jupy, and I will be glad to show you some primo cuts of New Japan. (laughs) (laughs) Um, What I can say uh, about this pay-per-view is, as I said last year, it's going to blow away all the other pay-per-views, and for the most part, I think it accomplished that this year. I think that it's going to it set a bar, especially the two uh you know the two top matches of uh kenny and osprey and okada and omega that is gonna be a the that is now the bar like they have now upped the bar as far as for aew's fans expectations (laughs) um Mm. which is gonna be a very hard bar for them to ever reach it's like a double-edged sword it's like how are you gonna top that but i don't think it's necessarily about topping it i think it's more of about what this what this pay-per-view kind of shows and this is one of the things i love about new japan and this is why i i support them so much is that it's every kind of wrestling like there's some comedic shit there's some pure wrestling there's some high flying there's some goo there's some there's some just hard hitting wrestling submission style it's a little bit of everything and that's what i love about it and and i think that this pay-per-view showed that proper the only thing i would say is i'm kind of like i was a little bummed was there was no bullet club representation because i was kind of hoping to see jay 
But at the same time right now, there's kind of a flux going on with Bullet Club in Japan and here in AEW. So it's kind of like they're trying to figure out what to do. And I think they're eventually going to build something more along the lines for Forbidden Door 3. Mm. And my thing of it is, my other thing that I'm happy about, and I think I could speak on this with Ninja as well, I'm happy that the Forbidden Door wasn't a one-off. That was my biggest fear, is that they were just going to do a one and done, never do it again, and just like, eh, dad, we don't want to see any of these Japanese wrestlers that we don't care about. I'm like, but dude, what the... F-? But no, they actually... They sh- they stepped up. A lot of the wrestlers stepped up, uh, yeah. both on, on New Japan and AEW side. Uh, AEW in this pay-per-view proved that they can to an extent hang with them, but it also proved that AEW also needs to step up their game. And it also proved that it gave a broader worldwide audience because, because people forget this was also simulcasted in Japan. So a lot of people that were in Japan never had seen these wrestlers. They've never seen like half of the ro- roster of AEW. They've been, they just, they just started a collaboration thing about a year ago with AEW where they actually broadcast AEW shows. Dynamite, Rampage, Collision are available in Japan on New Japan World. Mm. But the commentary is not done in English. It's done, weirdly enough, by Shingo Takagi. Uh, I was so happy to see Miki as well. Miki is uh, Miki was the female Japanese commentator. She is the holy shit she is like the amount of knowledge she knows about wrestling she makes like dave Meltzer blush like holy shit Mm. like she keeps track of everything she'll literally be like oh john she'll be like john uh, translated but she'll be like john moxley is a very very well accomplished wrestler in fact he he's a multi-time wwe champion he was in mlw he was this he was this in gcw he was also this and this and this 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 this, this." you're like holy shit fuck (laughs) <laughs> but imagine like this encyclopedic knowledge in this cute little japanese girl's voice and then you just hear shingo go hmm interesting like <laughs> he's like no huh. <laughs> it's so funny but like i said i i'm just like i'm so happy that this is what it's supposed to be i think that's what real wrestling should be it should be a branch of of styles a branch of wrestling a branch of branding and i think that this pay-per-view accomplished that very very well and i'm happy that you guys all enjoyed it that's the big thing big takeaway for me i'm happy you guys all enjoyed it just as much as i did that really makes me happy oh and everything i forgot i mentioned uh also because this is going this is super international because this is this uh because then this pay-per-view happened in canada as well like in Toronto? Yeah. Yeah, it's the first show that they've ever done in New Japan and AEW pay-per-view in in Canada. So it's, yeah, it's a three-time international. So It's very cool that AEW really, really is branching out. So my only thought is, damn, why, why aren't they going to bring that to Mexico? They need to have an AEW pay-per-view event in Mexico. I'm surprised they haven't done one already considering they have a joint promotion. They have like literally like joint with AAA. I mean, they constantly had, had remember Kenny was the AAA mega champion and I'm like and you did nothing with that? Okay. <laughs> like and then they constantly have Elfie Kingo and he's the AAA mega champion and I'm like come on guys. Maybe do a show in Mexico. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I think most of us, uh, we all said our piece there. And let me just get the winners and losers here. So surprisingly, well, not surprisingly, because this is more, the whole pay-per-view here is more of Jack's real house. Uh, Jack actually won with 11 points. And myself, Johnny, and Ninja Panda um, all got nine points. But unfortunately, Jupy only got eight points. So that means you're going to have to start to freshen up your resume and start working over at Freddy's for a week. 
<sighs> if I must, well, I already have a plan. I already have my plan set up for that. I'm hiding under the desk. If they don't see me, they can't stuff me in a suit. <laughs> oh, man. So, yeah, guys, I'm not sure we got any uh, parting things to say, but uh, if not, then yes, this is the Diving Cutter Wrestling Podcast, the number two curve in Zomia, because number one is still last double or nothing and everything. So, uh, this is Mark Rodriguez signing off. Uh, just to remind you all, I think uh, next month we're going to have Ring of Honor. I think it's Death of Forge is Honor. If yeah. not, it's some Ring of Honor pay-per-view. So, of course, we'll be coming back for predictions and reviews of that one. So, stay tuned for that one. But, uh, yes, it's Mark Rodriguez signing off. Wayne White, a.k.a. Ninja Panda 1980. I am out of here. Jack Nas from Jack Nas Reviews. Happy to represent New Japan. And I'm Audi. All right, this is Juby Chan, also known as Ninja Juby. I'll see you guys later. Now turn it over to the man of the hour, the man with the power, the man that had the high chew that I wish I had, Johnny Rodriguez. Yes. See you next time, guys. Yes, see you next time as Chun Li stares into your very soul. Dun 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 dun. Oh, Catch you later.